Hello and welcome to this tutorial, which is about WAN connectivity by using DSL. So DSL stands for Digital Subscriber Line, and it was introduced in the mid-1990s and really started to get popular towards the late 1990s. So you can see DSL has been around for a while. However, it's still a relevant technology. There are still many instances of DSL for home users and for business users. And so as the DSL got more and more popular, it came to replace analog modems. And the primary reason why it was so favorable when compared to the analog modem was that it was a lot faster when it came to internet access. Now the reason why is because DSL was, de was designed primarily to offer fast internet access. That was its purpose. Analog modems, on the other hand, their purpose originally was really for two PCs to connect to each other. And if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial on analog modems and as a WAN connectivity option, uh, please have a look there where we talk about the um, uh, analog modems being used to connect to PCs as well as offer internet connectivity. But the internet connectivity use of analog, analog modems wasn't the primary uh, intention when it was first uh, created. So DSL by design was meant to be better, and it was. So let's look at some of the details of DSL. So we start off by having a router or a DSL modem. You can use either one. Usually the router has to be DSL enabled, um, but you can use either one. There are a lot of options there. And the DSL modem or router will connect to a regular POTS line, just like an analog modem um, does as well. So you can use your existing landline at home. However, it needs to be enabled by your telecom provider for DSL. Because on the other end of that POTS line is something called the DSLAM. Now the DSLAM stands for DSL Access Multiplexer. And that's the, the device that would terminate the DSL service offered by your ISP or your telco provider. Some of the differences between DSL and analog modems are that with DSL, on this POTS line, you can use both a regular phone and DSL at the same time. Whereas with the analog modem, you couldn't. You were either on the phone or using the modem. You couldn't do both at the same time. With DSL, you can use both at the same time. And the reason being is that DSL and a, f and a regular analog phone call use different frequencies. The DSL was using a higher frequency and the phone call was using a lower one. So that's how they could coexist at the same time on a POTS line without any interference. Now, when you connected to the POTS line and you started sending traffic to your ISP, at the ISP, the DSLAM would then connect to their infrastructure, their routers, which would then route your traffic to the Internet or wherever you were going. DSL introduced the concept of always-on connectivity. So if you remember, with dial-up, with analog modems, you had to do just that. You had to dial into something, either to a, a modem bank uh, at your ISP or to another computer. And you would actually use a phone number to do that, right? Because it used the PSTN, and people were always very conscious of how long they were online because it was essentially a phone call as far as your telecom provider was concerned. Well, with DSL, you didn't have to dial in every time you wanted to get online. You would connect once, and then you were just always on, and you would leave it on. Now, that seems pretty commonplace today. However, back at the time, this was a different approach for most people. So here you can see we have our home or business user with the DSL router or modem, and it's using um, DSL, and it connects to a POTS line into the DSLAM, and then the DSLAM is owned and operated either by a telco or an ISP, and they go ahead and route traffic to and from the Internet um, as you choose. Okay, let's talk about DSL and speed. So there are two categories we can talk about when we talk about DSL speed. However, keep in mind there are many different service providers and they all offer different packages. So you'll have to shop around and compare prices and speeds to find out what's right for you. But generally speaking, we can talk about two categories. The first category is called symmetric or symmetric DSL, sometimes just called SDSL. And with symmetric DSL, 
the speed of your circuit in both directions is going to be the same. So the speed going this way and the speed going that way are going to be the same, and that's symmetric DSL. Now keep in mind, this speed is called your upload, and this one is called your download. And that kind of makes sense because if you're this, this user here and you're sending a lot of traffic to, let's say, a web server over here, you're uploading it to this server. However, if there's a web server here and you're going to visit it, you're going to download a lot of information from that server back to you. So when you talk about speed, you'll talk about upload and download. So with symmetric, the upload and the download are the same. The other category is asymmetric, or ADSL. And with ADSL, the upload and the download speeds are not the same. In fact, they're different. Now, the most common deployment of ADSL is a higher download speed than the upload speed. And the reason why ADSL is like this is because for most casual users, most people at home, all they do is go to websites, for the most part. And really, when you're going to a website or when you're going to most services online, you're pulling in more information than you're sending out. So that's why ADSL is kind of geared towards the home user or the casual user. And it's a very popular service. It's a little bit less expensive than your standard symmetric DSL. Now, some of these speeds we're talking about can vary from 1.5 megabits per second download to, if you're talking about asymmetric, to 128K upload. So you can see the up and down can vary quite significantly on an ADSL circuit, whereas with a symmetric, it would be, for instance, 1.5 megs in both directions. Some of the factors that can affect the speed, aside from what you actually purchase, are the distance between your location and the DSLAM. So the greater this distance, the less uh, speed you're going to get, the lower speed you're going to get. And in fact, if you go far enough out from the, from the CO and the DSLAM, you just won't be able to get DSL service at all. It just won't be available in your area, which is pretty typical in a lot of remote uh, countryside areas. The other factor that can play a big part in the DSL speeds is the quality of the cabling, both in your building and the, and the cabling that's run to the DSLAM. So, if you're in a very old building and you have a lot of exposed wires or they're sort of deteriorated because they're sold, your speeds, even though you may be paying for one thing, you may actually only get the other because the wiring is not in great shape. Okay, so those are some things to keep in mind when we talk about DSL speeds. All right, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know that DSL was designed to be fast, and that's why it pretty much replaced analog modems for the most part, at least when it came to Internet access. Now, we know DSL uses a regular POTS line, and it introduced the always-on concept, meaning you didn't have to dial up every time you wanted to be on. You just connected, and you were on. On the other end of your POTS line was the DSLAM, and that's where all of the DSL uh, services would, would terminate, and those would be offered by your ISP provider. And with DSL, on that regular POTS line, both a phone call and the DSL could work simultaneously. You could do both at the same time. Finally, we talked about the speeds, and we know that there's asymmetric and symmetric DSL, and we know that there are some factors that can contribute um, and actually harm your speeds, such as the distance to the CO and the quality of the cabling in your building. Okay, so that's it. That is WAN connectivity using DSL. Thanks for watching.